Hello, loyal podcast listeners. I want to tell you right now, thank you for downloading and listening to this episode of Geek Mentality and for being one of the first people to download and listen to this episode. In the next 10 minutes, you will be able to listen to the rest of the episode completely free. That's my special little thank you for the holiday season. Happy holidays and on with the show. My father was a lighthouse keeper. My mother was a queen. But life has a way of bringing people together. He could unite our worlds one day. Check it out, Arthur is talking to the fish. They made me what I am. Permission to come aboard. I've been looking for you. Your half-brother, King Orm, is about to declare war upon the surface world. The only way to stop this war is for you to take your rightful place as king. Trust me, I am no king. You do your best thinking when you're not thinking at all. That was the worst pep talk ever. I want to strap in. Welcome home. My brother has come from the surface to challenge me for the throne. We call it an ass whooping. I have no choice. I came to save my home and the people that I love. You think you're unworthy to lead because you're of two different worlds. That is exactly why you are worthy. That was awesome. The war is coming to the surface. And I'm bringing the wrath of the seven seas with me. Redheads, you gotta love them. Okay, it's Saturday, it's lunchtime, and what am I going to do? It's vacation, so I'm going to the movies alone. That's right, folks, today I am officially on vacation for the next two weeks of my life. And how am I celebrating it? By leaving my wife at home and going off to get tape so that we can wrap gifts. But between getting the tape and coming home, I'm going to the movies to see Aquaman. So, yeah, that's my day today. I wanted to get up early um, and go see a 9 a.m. showing. That was the plan, get myself a little coffee, go see Aquaman, uh, hang out with the rest of the old people. That didn't happen. Uh, That kind of plans changed and ended up getting tickets to the 12.30 showing in what is called the IMAX theater inside an AMC, my local AMC. What does that mean? I have no idea. Uh, it could, it, it means a bigger screen. I don't think it's a full IMAX experience. It means a few more dollars, I know that. But my ticket is secured. My seat is secured. I got it through AMC. I put the app, so I just ping, uh, just kind of show them my phone when I get there. And I will, because it's noontime, because it's the beginning of school vacations everywhere, I am going to probably be surrounded by people. Um, and they're going to be like, well, is this guy alone? What, what is his story? Is he okay? Watch him. Keep an eye on him. It's the story of my life when I go to things alone. Uh, I'm excited to see Aquaman. I didn't get to go with my friend Dave. Hey, Dave. Uh, he went last night. I wasn't able to go to that, but I'm going right now. I'm going to see it. I'm excited. I, I wanted to make lots and lots of money and be good, you know, goodly reviewed, which is not a word. And I wanted to keep moving these DC movies forward. Now, it's made already hundreds of millions of dollars uh, thanks to China and overseas. So it would be interesting to see what this weekend becomes. Um, and I'm going to talk all about it 
after I see the movie. This is kind of how I do it. I'm going to, I'm driving to see the movie right now. That's what I did when I went to see Halloween. Then I walk outside. Hopefully I don't go through any people vaping because that happened last time. It was not a pleasant experience, though it had a sweet smell in the air. Uh, and I'm going to be honest. Now, I am look, going into this movie looking forward to it. So when I see these movies right away, I start to say, oh, I like that. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like this. Oh, I like that. And I look for the positive things. Uh, I, I try to kind of accentuate the positive. But if there is negative, I'm going to come out and say it. And the sad thing is, is usually I start to see the negative uh, after a couple days. Maybe I listen to a podcast or I, I, I read a couple things and go, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that wasn't that great. By that time, it's too late. The podcast has been out and I already said, oh, this is the greatest movie about a man talking to fish ever. It's the greatest since uh, The Incredible Mr. Limpet. Um, so I'm probably going to be positive, but I mean, you know that going in. Jesus, if I can be positive about um, some of the crap movies that I've seen, I could be positive about a movie that is actually getting some positive reviews. So, usually I say I'm walking into the movie theater right now, but that is not entirely the case. Right now, I'm getting out. I'm going into the local Rite Aid, which I guess is going to become a Walgreens someday. That'll be interesting. Going into the local Rite Aid to get tape, to get some clear scotch tape for wrapping gifts later, and also to probably sneak some sweets in through my jacket so I don't have to pay the exorbitant prices that they have at the theater. So... The next time you'll hear my voice, I'll be walking out of the theater and I will be telling you exactly how I feel, instant reaction of Aquaman. I'm in the theater right now and uh, it's just a few minutes before like the preview start. Seems like a pretty good crowd. It's the IMAX theater, which means that the seats don't go back, which kind of stinks. And also means that the screen is humongous, so big that the people in front of me actually like are in front of the screen a bit. The thing about these places now is that they're assigned seats. So nobody gets here early. So everyone just shows up and now they're gonna, I gotta move my legs on. Go Aquaman. Aquaman, swift and powerful monarch of the oceans with ability to summon and command all creatures of the deep. Aquaman, who with his teenage ally, Aqualad, guards and defends all that lives in the seas against the forces of evil. Aquaman, King of the Seven Seas. Whew. It's a little bit colder and a little bit windier than the last time I walked out of the movie theater. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I just walked out of... 2018 DC Comics superhero movie Aquaman, Aquaman, Aquaman does whatever another fish can. Swims underwater, talks to other fish. Um, it was beautiful to look at. Like I saw it on the IMAX screen, so the screen was huge. I didn't see it in 3D, so I don't know how the 3D looked. I don't care how the 3D looked. Um, I saw it how I will be watching it, you know, in the future when it's on TBS or something. Just regular 2D, uh, big screen, HD, IMAX experience, whatever you want to call it. And this movie, like I said, was beautiful to look at. Was it a great movie? No, it wasn't a great movie. Was it a good movie? Yeah, I think so. I, I enjoyed it. There's a lot of stuff in it that I, I had fun with. First of all, I'm a big comic book nerd. And I'm getting in the car now. Oh, let me just close the door. Big comic book nerd, and uh, I'm a DC Comics guy. So I was hoping to see some sort of crossover with some sort of other superheroes. Um, didn't get anything from that. Nothing. So, oh, by the way, spoiler alert. If you haven't seen Aquaman, don't listen to this. But uh, spoiler alert, there's nothing else in this movie. There's no other, uh, you know, um, DC... Justice League folk, there's no Batman, no Superman, no Wonder Woman, nothing like that. But that's okay. This was his story. And did, oh, like, wait a minute, was Bruce Wayne in Wonder Woman for a minute? I forget. No, I don't think he was. Um, he was in that Suicide Squad one. I could be wrong. Maybe he was in Wonder Woman. I don't remember. Um, but there was nothing, no crossover. And that's okay. This was Aquaman's movie. And to me, 
Jason Momoa is a star. I mean, he, very charismatic, he's believable and fun, and he filled the role perfectly. Um, Amber Heard, she is a very attractive actress who was also there. And I guess I mean that by, like, sometimes just the way she delivered her lines, it felt flat to me. Um, like, it just felt like she was saying them, and I was like, I'm pulling my collar, which I shouldn't be doing because I'm driving and holding my phone. Um, but so she was okay. But I thought Jason Momoa was really good. He was, because he just seemed to have fun with it. And this movie, there's a lot of moments, like, it's, it's a superhero movie. So they have all the tropes, the superhero landings, the slow motions, the, um, you know, there's a lot of fighting in the dark, but there's also a lot of fighting in the daytime, which is nice to see because it's not like you can, you know, some of these DC movies have been so dark and you're hiding all your special effects in the dark. And I know it's easier to do special effects in the dark. Um, and But it was nice to see some some big, beautiful, bright uh, fights in the daytime in Sicily, Italy. Um, let me see if I can kind of go through what the movie's about. So it just, it very quickly gives you Aquaman's origin of dad's a light keeper, lighthouse keeper, and mom washes up on shore. He brings her in. There's some, you know, fish out of water, uh, to, you know, pun intended, um, moments where she's like, doesn't know what's going on, but she stays with him. They fall in love. They make a half fish person, half earth person baby, a surface person, I guess you could say, because it's all earth. It's all one big earth. So they make a baby. He can, because he's got Atlantean uh, blood in him, he can, oh, shut up. Everyone's beeping. Um, he can swim really fast. He can breathe underwater. Uh, and because he's an earthling, he can also, well, I guess because he's part of the royal lineage, he can also breathe on land, which makes sense because he was born on land. I don't know. There was a lot going on in this movie that it almost was like the overall plot was too complicated. So um, we go from the, you know, them falling in love and making a baby called Aquaman, uh, Arthur, to there's a lot of Christmas traffic. Ooh. To um, a, sh a ship that is attaching itself to a submarine. So it's a submarine attaching itself to a submarine. And these pirates come aboard as, I guess, a Russian submarine and are, you know, killing people and stealing stuff from it. Aquaman shows up, beats him up, um, leaves one guy. And that was a little sappy. Like the pirates were going, oh, your grandfather had this knife. He passed it on to me. Now I pass it on to you. I'm like, wait, are these the good guys or the, the bad guys? I'm confused. And the bad guy... Uh, the, the guy, guy who passed it on to his son died because Aquaman let him die. And so the son's like, I'm going to avenge you. And he took the, the dad's knife. He's, he was like, your grandfather was the Manta. And now, you know, this life is yours because this is big pirate day is yours. Congratulations, son. But they're the villains. Uh, so he's like, I'm going to get you someday, Aquaman. I'm going to get you. At the same time, Aquaman's hanging out with his dad back on Earth. He meets some fanboys. They hang out, drink, take some photos. That was kind of fun. Um, and so they, they go to drive home, and Amber Heard shows up, and she comes out of the water, and she's like, Yo, Aquaman, I need, we need your help. There's a war coming, and, and all these people are going to fight under, underwater, and then we're going to come for Earth and fight Earth next. He's like, ah, you know, that's not me. You know, don't worry about that. I really don't care. He's like, no, no, you understand. They're going to come and they're going to kill Earth and everyone's going to be dead. He's like, all right. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I could help. Uh, how would I even do this? You know, ah, maybe not. I got to take my dad home. Takes his dad home and there's a giant tidal wave that I guess was sent from the Atlanteans. I don't know. Uh, I think it was maybe because of all the wars going on underground. So... The, uh, the tidal wave almost kills Aquaman's dad. It was actually pretty cool to see, and Amber Heard saves the day because she can control water. Um, Aquaman can't do that, but he can But he can do something special that other people can't do. Um, 
they flash back when he was a kid and they can show that Aquaman can talk to and kind of communicate with fish. You think, oh, that's something that all the fish people can do. But not so, not so. Uh, I'm talking, am I going too deep into this? I don't know. I'm just driving home and trying to think and remember everything I can think and remember. So then Aquaman's like, fine, all right, I guess I'll help you. You know, they're going to come to Earth, blah, 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 onto the surface. I, I should help. So what do we do? Well, let's go into water and meet your old friend, Willem Dafoe. So Willem Dafoe, I guess, was, you know, because he was friends with, um, with Aquaman's mom, uh, said, I will help train him for the future. Oh, by the way, the Atlanteans came for Aquaman's mom because she was escaping an arranged marriage and they almost killed her and she says, I have to leave. I have to leave because there's no way they're going to stop chasing me. Um, so I'm going to leave. So she leaves to go back to them, to back to Atlantis. And the kid's like, I want to go back and see my mom. Come on, Willem Dafoe. Can you bring me back to my mom? He's like, someday. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. That's my Willem Dafoe. Someday. And, um, Finally, he says, you know, they, she was a traitor uh, and they sacrificed her to the, the, the gorge or to the, to the, I don't know, they sacrificed her to this like scary part of the earth, the uh, underwater. Um, and so she's dead. Or is she? Uh, he's like, no, I'm going to avenge her. Uh, and he's thinking about that. He goes, I think about that all the time ever since then. And now he goes down and he, he goes down to meet Willem Dafoe. He's like, how you doing? What do we got to do to win this? I think you got to get the trident. But you also got to figure out what this message thing does. And it's, it's in the sand ocean, whatever the hell that means. Um, so they have this, this decoder ring, basically, that they have to take to the desert to go and find out because the desert used to be a giant ocean too and they have to find out where this king hid his awesome golden um trident but before they do that the bad guys show up beat them up uh he ends up meeting the one of the head bad guy who is his brother his half brother because the queen went back and had uh had a baby with the king uh and that the new king that she had to marry, but then the king was so jealous and, about her having Aquaman also that that's when they decided to sacrifice her and kill her. Uh, or did they? And this is me. I'm just walking out of the theater, so I'm just going to ramble as much as I can. So they walk out of the theater, and then, I mean, I walked out of the theater, so he's like, I'm going to kill you, Aquaman. He goes, but first, you want to fight to the death? Let's fight to the death. So they have this ring of fire. Everything's underwater, and they're fighting to the death. And Amber Heard's like, he's not going to win. So she steps in with her little underwater space submarine and saves him, and they leave together. And that's when the bad guy, Patrick Wilson's like, oh, my God, that's my, that's my betrothed, and she's with Aquaman. Son of a bitch. Uh, also, uh, Amber Heard's dad is played by Dolph Lundgren. Friggin' amazing. Dolph Lundgren is having himself quite the year with Creed II and Aquaman. Very exciting. So they get to the surface. They go to the desert. They find the Dakota ring. It tells them you got to go um, to Italy, right? And it's, I don't know. Somehow they tell them to go to Italy. They find a statue. They put a bottle up to the statue and says, boom, that's where you need to go. They go there and they realize they're in the trench. That's what it was. And the trench had these really cool looking underwater creatures. They were very well designed. I don't know. They look cool. And, but they're afraid of light because they're so used to the darkness. So they take these flares out and they jump in the water and the monsters avoid wherever the flares are. Thank God they're waterproof flares. And that was a really cool visual of these just thousands and thousands of creatures surrounding them, but avoiding them because of the, the orb of the, the, the light from the flare was giving them. And so they go down they're like, oh my God, that's the trench. We, we go in there, we die. Like we have to go in there. I don't know how they knew that, but they went in there and boom, they end up um, in like another part of the ocean where Amber Heard gets saved by this weird-looking creature person thing that turns out to be bah, 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 Nicole Kidman. She got sacrificed to the trench. She made it through to this underwater, oh, the forgotten uh, sea in the center of the earth with this friggin' dinosaurs. I wasn't expecting dinosaurs, little dinosaurs, pterodactyls. Um, and she's like, there's no way out of here. Oh my God, son, you're alive. They hug him and he's like, I need to get the golden trident. She goes, well, that's actually the way to get out of here. The golden trident works out perfectly. So he goes, but you have to go through that waterfall and there's a big monster down there. She, he's like, that's cool. I'm Aquaman. No problem. I'll do it. He, he gives, he, before he turns, he gives a little wink. He's like, I'm so cool. And he jumps into the uh, water, goes down 
to the depths, sees the trident, because the trident was held by the king. So the Atlantis used to be on the surface, and the king harnessed this power, and it ruined uh, Atlantis and brought it underwater. And while things evolved, and they learned how to fish, swim, under, uh, breathe underwater, the king was like, oh, I'm so upset, and I'm going to stay here with my trident forever. So that's where he was, and people have come and tried, but this monster killed them, or they've been disintegrated trying to get the trident, I think, I, something like that. And this monster shows up, and it's got a lady's voice, and all of a sudden... Arthur's like, or Aquaman, same thing. He's like, wait, no. And she's like, what? You can hear me? You can understand me? And that's when I realized, hey, Aquaman's the only one who has the special ability to talk to fish. Not every Atlantean. Maybe it's in his DNA. Maybe it's his royal lineage. I don't know. But um, I forgot about this whole fight in Italy. Oh, yeah. So they're in Italy. And, oh, yeah. Okay. So, um we're in Atlantis earlier and they're talking about, we got to get the kingdoms together and earth is going to probably be fighting us. And Dolph Lundgren is like, I don't know about that. And then all of a sudden a submarine shows up and attacks them. And I'm like, where the F did that submarine come from? And Patrick Wilson destroys the submarine. And then later he goes up onto the surface. And who do we see? We see that guy from the pirate from the first scene with the Manta knife. And he's like, you, you know, your, your, um, submarine was kind of decrepit, but it didn't really work. Um, I mean, it worked. No, it did the job. It scared them enough that they think, you know, the Earth is going to be um, fighting us, so we'll fight back. Um, and he's like, here's some gold. He goes, I don't want gold. I just want to kill Aquaman. He's like, all right. Uh, and then later, he show, they show up, and he's like, yo, you really want to kill Aquaman? Here's some Atlantean uh, guns and stuff that run on water. Uh, really cool. He's like, okay, cool. I'm going to take those guns, and I'm going to make a suit out of them with a big, giant, bulbous uh a bug looking head. And I'm assuming this is what Black Manta looks like from the comic books. I don't know these things. I've read some Aquaman comic books, mostly from the new 52. I don't know. I don't even remember. I'm sure I saw Black Manta in there. I'm sure this is more specific to the comic book. It looks silly on camera, on the film because he's taking the laser and he's having it shoot out of his eyes and it blew up the first time around. He's like, I'm going to do the bigger head. And even the, the, it was a little jokey with the villain. I'm like, this is the villain and it's a little jokey. Um, so there, oh, the tidal wave brought all these ships and all this garbage to shore and people are like, what's going on? And, and there's this one, uh, scientist guy who's like, it's the Atlanteans. We already know this. They're coming for us. And no one believes him. And it's, he's, uh, he's played by, um, oh God, what's his first name? His last name's Park. He's in, he's on Fresh Off the Boat. He's on Veep, really funny comic actor. Uh, he played, um, he played uh, Kim Jong Un in that movie, The Interview. So he's um, and he actually plays a little part in this later. So, boom, we he's just on TV, a talking head, going, "This is bad for us. It's the Atlanteans. It's the Atlanteans." Forget about that for now. So uh, they go. So when Aquaman and the other girl in Italy looking for where to, you know, figure out where they need to go to get to Nicole Kidman. I'm jumping all over the place. Uh, that's when the dude in the suit shows up with some Atlanteans to fight Aquaman and, and Mara, I believe. And Aquaman beats the crap out of him after, you know, getting the crap beat out of him. Kind of cool set piece because they're jumping all over these villages in Sicily. It was kind of cool to look at. Uh, Atlanteans can't breathe unless they're royal lineage, can't breathe on Earth. So one guy gets his mask broken open. He has to stick his head in a toilet. That was kind of funny. Um, and then finally Aquaman's like punches uh, Black Manta or throws a, throws a big giant stone ball at him. Uh, uh, Bla and the guy goes tumbling down into the ocean and he goes under the water and you don't see him. And you're like, oh my God, he's not dead. There's no way this guy could be dead. He's probably set up for the, to be the sequel villain in the next time around. Um, and so flash forward to Aquaman taking the trident uh, because that big giant monster underwater says, sure, you could do it. If you can do it, great. If you can't, I'm going to eat you. He's like, oh, I'm going to do it. And when he does it, somehow magically the, the king's uh, clothes go onto Aquaman and it's that classic orange green look updated a little bit with some scales and shit. But Aquaman, uh, you know, he comes out of the waterfall with his hair all wet, the golden trident, suit uh, looking badass he's like okay i'm gonna go now and she and then all of a sudden this is when the ocean um wars are happening because patrick wilson is scaring people into saying join me or die so there's all these wars going on and then boom a giant explosion happens and it's that huge monster from under the water and who's riding that huge monster but aquaman because 
Nicole Kidman said, you get the trident, you get out of the water. Aquaman's like, I'm here. Rah! And he shows up and all of a sudden he's like, boop, 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 and he's talking to the fish people, to the, to the fish, to the, all the underwater creatures. And they're, and they're like, whoa, what, what's going on? The Atlanteans don't know this could happen. And the sharks, because they're riding sharks, they're riding uh, seahorses. And all of a sudden, he can kind of control them all and be like, you don't want to fight. And then he brings all these other fish from all over the frigging world. And they're like, come with me. I'm Aquaman. And basically, uh, um, Dolph Lundgren's like, oh, my God, he's got the gold trident. He's our king. He's our king, everybody. He's our king. So they don't want to fight him anymore. And then Patrick Wilson's like, they, they have this big fight. And uh, all of a sudden, he's like, just kill me, man. Kill me. And it's... um. Uh, it was basically Karate Kid 2, Karate Kid 2. Um, I wanted to say, live or die, man. Die. Wrong. Honk. Um, but that didn't happen. Basically, he said, um, I'm not going to kill you. That's not who I am. And then Nicole Kidman, Nicole Kidman comes back, and Patrick Wilson's like, oh, my God, Mom, you're alive. And she goes, you're, you're with him? And she says, yes, I am. I was expecting Patrick Wilson to stab her right there and kill her but he didn't he got taken away he was like someday we'll talk and all i thought of was thor and loki and this you know this this whole other world and the brothers and uh it was renee renee russo not nicole kidman and uh but um basically he's like all right i'm the king now yeah and uh he um then we flash forward to the dad back on, on the surface. Every day he comes to the edge of the dock, every day hoping that Nicole Kidman will come back to her. Her name's Atlanta, like the city. Uh, and the one day she shows up, and she's still looking good, and he's an old man now, but uh, she still seemed to be happy to see him. He was definitely happy to see her. And they kissed, and then there was a little speech where uh, he's like, my father was a lighthouse keeper, my mother was a queen. They should have never met, but then they met, and they did it, and I was born. And I am Aquaman! And then he shouts out of the water, and he has the trident in his hand. So it was cool because we saw the... Blah, 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 blah. We saw the, like, the circles of him talking to fish. We saw him riding a seahorse. Very much you know, things that Aquaman could be made fun of. He did it in a really cool way. Jason Momoa... Is awesome. Uh, the movie is okay. You know what I mean? There's lots of like, well, over, like, geez, they, I mean, do we really have to do this to this to this to this? And why did this happen? How did this happen? And it's one of, the, one of these movies where I don't care. I'm looking at this giant spectacle and it's fun and it's enjoyable. And I just want fun superhero movies. They don't have to all be friggin' sub, uh, uh, Captain America, Winter Soldier. They don't have to be these like downer DC movies that we see sometimes. I want fun action. And that's what they did. And I know Zack Snyder was a, a producer on this, but he did not write this. He did not direct this. And maybe the clue is keep Zack Snyder away from these movies and make them a little more fun. Now, if you stay for the whole credits, you wasted your time. I was the last friggin' person in the theater. There is nothing at the end of the credits, but there is a mid credit scene. I'm going to talk about it now. I'm going to spoil it. So all of a sudden, there's, we're on the ocean. And we see this board, and what's who's floating on the board but Black Manta? He's alive. He looks a little busted up, but he is alive. And these this boat shows up out of nowhere, and I'm almost positive. I'm like, wait, on the boat? Is that? Yes, it is that friggin' same scientist guy who's been claiming, uh, which was just a weird coincidence, I guess. I don't know. Um, maybe not, maybe not. Because he was just whining about... Well, I don't want to get out of the car yet. He was whining about Atlanteans the whole time. So maybe after everything that's, that kind of happened with the, all the ships, he's been tracking Aquaman. He's been tracking seismic activity. Uh, so he's been out there on the ocean, and he happens to run into Black Manta. He gets a boat, runs into Black Manta, takes him back to his his shack, I guess. And, um, and he's, like, helping him, nursing him get back to life. He's looking at the mask, and... Uh, He's like, I could fix this or something. I could make this better. I don't know what he said. But he and the guy's like, do whatever you can. Do you want my help? He's like, yeah, as long as you help me find him. And he throws something, a knife, and it hits the a blank a newspaper that says, who is Aquaman all in black? And that's how it ends. So basically, just like I said, Black Manta is set up for the sequel, Aquaman 2, which I'm, I'm assuming we're going to get based on, so far, the box office of this movie. Uh, so I saw it in IMAX theater at noon, and the theater was pretty packed. Uh, I know it's made over 300 million worldwide so far, so I'm excited to see what it does for the weekend. I kind of care about these things only because if these movies make more money, then they'll make more movies. You know, we saw what happened with Star Wars, where Solo made a ton of money, but it under, 
um, it it kind of it did under expectation. Is that the word? They, it did less than what they expected to the point where they're like, oh, we're not going to make a Boba Fett movie now. So, I mean, maybe for some people, it's like, good, I'm sick of these movies. Maybe if your name's Chris and you're like, I don't care about superhero movies. Like, maybe you're saying, oh, great. They don't, they can make less crappy movies than more good movies. Okay, fine, great. But, you know, if these movies do really well, it's because... People are seeing them. People are seeing them because good word of mouth and they're enjoying it, which means they get to make more movies. Yes, they might be a stinker here and there, but I want to see more. I want to see more Superman. Please, Superman, please do not, do not abandon us. Uh, you weren't here this time. There was really no... Um, there was... Oh, they did talk about Justice League a little because they brought up... Um, uh, what's his name? Uh... Steppenwolf, the worst villain. My God, that villain sucked. Um, where this time the villain was more, you know, people. It was, you know, just people. It didn't have to be this giant CG thing. And Dolph Lundgren, you know, he was kind of with um, Aquaman. Then he was like, no, 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 we, we, I want to be with everyone else. No, 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 I'm back with Aquaman. Um, but hey, man, Dolph Lundgren. Also, Willem Dafoe. When, when I see Willem Dafoe, I'm thinking, oh, at some point he's going to turn on Aquaman and he's going to be a bad guy. No. Very surprising and, and nice uh, to see that Willem Dafoe basically was exactly what we thought he was, um, what he presented himself as, was uh, a good guy who's there for Mr. Aquaman. So, my friends, that's it. I'm not sure what else to say. I just got out of the theater. Um, I'm still trying to remember everything I saw. I'm sure I left a ton out. I'm sure it didn't make any sense. Uh, I, you know, so I listened to this podcast uh, called... Um, uh, uh, now playing, where I think they're going to see these movies, they see these movies multiple times, uh, and then they, they research these things, and then they come together and they give you like a really well uh, thought out opinions based on facts, based on things that they remember, things that they can talk about, and they tell you a lot of cool things about movies. I'm not like that. I just saw the movie, I got out, I'm talking into my friggin' phone, and I am basically um, just saying anything that I can think of about this movie. And I just want to say, I enjoyed it. It was fun. And I want DC to keep going in this direction. Fun, excitement, uh, spectacles, big, bright, um, with, with energy, and not just these down, rainy. It's funny, the first scene is a dark and rainy. I'm like, oh my God, here we are. Uh, but in, and this movie, like I said, was beautiful to look at. Like, it was... The, and I know all you're seeing is basically uh, CGI, but the underwater stuff was tr amazing. And you think back to like, um, you think back to Hunt for Red October, and they did the underwater scenes by like pushing the camera by a, a submarine and filling the air with smoke. And that's how it gave that in slow motion. That's how it gave that look. Uh, and now it's, you know, it's all CGI, but it really, you know, just even watching Jason Momoa and Dolph Lundgren's hair, you know, floating in the underwater, I was like, this is some great CGI. And, uh, you know, the creature design was cool. It was like inventive. Um, yeah, you know, it's going to see, there's, there's corny moments. Um, there's, I mean, I, I don't know how many times you'd be in the middle of something and, a giant explosion would happen out of nowhere. Like they'd be in the middle of a conversation and boom, explosion. Uh, and so this movie is like definitely, and there were at least three moments of that. And there's, you know, the cool, there's always the stupid landing and the, you know, with the super, superhero pose, there's some of that stuff. Um, Amber Heard wasn't, wasn't great, uh, but Jason Momoa was. So yeah, I'm, you know, Chris, if you're still listening at this point, two thumbs up, all right? Um, is it a five-star movie? No. Is it a, is it an Oscar-winning movie? No. But is it a fun movie that I'm glad I went to go see and I'm glad they're making these movies? Yes. And that's it for me, folks. You can find me on Twitter at Geek Mentality, on Instagram at Geek Mentality, on Facebook it's Fans Not Experts. The website is fansnotexperts.com. The podcast is available at anchor.fm slash geek mentality. It's basically, you can, if you go to any of those places, you'll find me, you'll find this episode, you can subscribe. Um, very few do because I don't have many episodes, but I've done more episodes already these last few months than I've done uh, all last year, except for June when I do 30 movies, 30 podcasts in 30 days. And I hope you subscribe and stay with me as we make our way to June. But until that moment, until that time, I have something for you very special. This is my theme song. This is my podcast, I made it. 
Geek mentality is what I named it. And I think you should listen and subscribe. Cause I'm kind of funny and awesome. I think that I'm worth your time. And I'm kind of handsome. My mom says, please listen and please subscribe. At least listen to this episode. Fans not experts.